Good morning. Today we have a very simple goal. Find out if there is a mechanic within like walking distance that will work on my car. That is the goal. First we're going there for breakfast. Then we're going to go walk across the street. I know there's a mechanic over there. I'm not sure if it would be cheaper for me to like get a tow truck and tow my car back to my dad's place and buy a plane ticket and then swap the engine myself than it would be to pay the local mechanic to swap the engine for me. See, I would keep doing some diagnosis on the engine, you know, like see if I could figure out specifically like what cylinder failed or something like that. But the fact that we found metal shavings in the oil yesterday means it's time for a new engine regardless. Whatever is happening with that engine, doesn't matter. We need a new one. Or more specifically, we need a used one that is in slightly better condition. It is entirely possible that I didn't break the engine. I got this car from a junkyard. Um, it's possible that they just had really shitty maintenance. This might have happened regardless of the temperature or, or anything. Like this might have just been a thing that I needed to do when I bought the used car. We can actually see the sun though. Like it's actually quite a bit warmer today. I don't see any burritos, so we'll have to order them. In addition to making pizzas, this gas station also makes burritos. Let me see if I can find out where this supposed auto mechanic is. Okay, I found them. There's the mechanic. I have no idea if my car will even make it that far. Kenzie Full Auto Service. It seems like a pretty small shop, so I'm not sure how quickly they can actually move through my car if I do decide to get them to work on this. It looks like they're open. Let's go find out. So, my car, it's got some rod knock. Sounds like it's about to throw a rod. Do you guys do engine swaps? We do, but... Okay, so my friend, she actually called ahead. She, like, lives here. She knows the people. He said that he is not able to work on the car until at least December, so that doesn't really work for me. But he did give me a number of another auto mechanic store that's, like, over here somewhere. There's not a guarantee that they'll be able to get me in, but they are definitely booked up. Anyway, let's go get our burritos. <laughs> Thank you very much. People ask in the comments why I always go into the store to pay for gas. It's because I don't actually use cards. I use my watch for Android Pay, and the pumps don't like using Android Pay, so you need to like physically go up and you need to use the terminal. I don't use plastic, I don't use physical cards. I'm just gonna put these here while we eat. Stay. So let's say that the worst case scenario happens and there is not any mechanic in the area that will work on my car within a reasonable amount of time. That means I need to find a way to swap the engine myself or I need to buy a new car. My car probably won't make it back to my brother's place. I just realized that I forgot to get a drink. Look at how big this thing is. America is great. We are also gonna get some Red Bull. There's a lot of work that I wanna get done today. Three of them, yeah, three should do. Yeah, see, you can't do that at the pumps. Some of you guys might think this is funny, but whenever I'm staying in like a hotel or something that gives me free electricity, I always have my computer just mining cryptocurrency. Yeah. I think that we are gonna go take a bath before work. Kind of cold, but I also need to call those mechanics. Gus Otto, Ryan. Update, I just gave them a call, and as you guys would expect with my luck, it's Thanksgiving next week, so they are not able to do it next week. It's already like completely done with this week. So they say the earliest they would be able to do this is like December 5th, but that is better than the other estimate, so that means that I've gotta chill here for like somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three weeks. I still need to buy an engine and ship it to them, but they seem pretty accommodating. I could just book out a hotel for like two or three weeks, but I'm going to potentially just get my brother to pick me up after I drop my car off and go chill with my brother just because that's saved me somewhere in the neighborhood of like $900. The problem is that his apartment isn't like the cleanest. Um, so with all of his shit there, there's not really room for like a Nate. Before we drop the car off at the mechanic, we are going to get some stuff because I'm not sure when I'm going to see the car again. This includes things like, ow, these struts don't work as well in the cold weather because they don't hold pressure. I might want to replace them too, the little air compressed shock things. I'm also going to take all of my clothes. I think I can leave like my tools and stuff here. I'm, there, I'm not going to be the one doing the work on it. Okay, now we 
here. Just going to go take this stuff into the hotel room. <sighs> okay, let's see if this car makes it to the shop. It's like five blocks away. I don't know if it'll make it. It is half a mile away. Do we think that this car can go 800 meters? Honestly, I think so. I think so. The biggest concern is that the engine shoots a rod and then we like lose a piston and that this does not work after that. But that typically only happens if it overheats and then the metal gets weak. I don't think there's gonna be overheating for a half mile trek. Let's find out. Hazards on. Let's go. Oh my God. No gas. Okay, I do have to have some gas. Come on, little guy, you can do it. Okay, I think we might make it. Come on, little guy, you can do it. Oh, he sounds so broken. That blue building, that's where we need to go. Turn right, then your destination will be on the left. Shut up, Google, I can see it. Your destination is on the left. Look at that. She made it. Let's go talk to the people. Ah, oh, shop office. Here we go. Okay, so they're gonna take the car. Uh, they say that it might take a couple of weeks. They're gonna, they won't let me ship an engine here. They won't let me buy my own engine and then ship it to them because apparently they make their overhead from buying an engine and upcharging it by a couple hundred dollars. So somewhere in the neighborhood of like $3,000 to get this engine replaced. Oh wow, this really is turning into a money pit. You might say, okay, well, for $3,000, you could just get a different car, but I've already spent so much money on this car. If I get a $3,000 car, I will just end up in the same position I'm already in. Like, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. $3,000 for a new engine. It is time to work, though. Because even during all of this, I still have a job. One thing I am curious about, this battery pack, this is the battery pack I got from my brother. I've had it for, like, coming up on almost two years now. It's been super cold, it's been in storage. I don't think that it has the capacity that the other one does, and I wanna see how much capacity it actually has. There are two ways to test a battery's capacity. The way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna completely discharge this, and then I'm gonna use a power meter to charge it all the way up. Find out how many milliamp hours take to charge this thing to full. The first thing that we're gonna do in order to deplete this battery is we are going to connect it to the MacBook that is mining cryptocurrency. So all of this electricity is just gonna go right into the MacBook. We're gonna turn it into crypto and this battery should be absolutely dead pretty quickly, honestly. It seems so ironic that just a couple days ago I was talking about like the best ways to take care of your engine. You, you slowly let it idle so the temperature drain and then my engine goes and blows up. I wanted this engine to go a half million miles and it made it like 60 from when I said that. Jesus Christ. Okay, the battery is now very much dead. You can see that the lights don't even come on anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in. But first, we're going to use this power meter. You can see that once you plug it in, it starts counting. Now, we're going to plug it in, and then we're just going to let this track exactly how much electricity goes into this battery. I know it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but that's what we're counting right there. 23 milliamp hours, 24 milliamp hours, 20. 5 milliamp hours. This battery, when you buy it brand new, it's supposed to have 70,000, 70,000 milliamp hours. We're gonna see how close to that it actually gets. It's been like a half hour. You can see that the lights, it's got like three out of four. So it's saying it's like 70% charged, but we've only got, but we've only got 1500 milliamp hours. So that's not even 10%. It's not even hitting 10% of its like designed capacity. This is one of the problems with lithium ion batteries is they don't do very well in like extreme cold or extreme heat. And if you store them for a long period of time, fully charged or completely dead, the lifespan just drops. I didn't think it would be this severe. This is atrocious. That's actually one of the cool selling points of this. These battery packs are lithium ion. That means that they're really dense. You're able to get lots of power in a small container, but they don't have the same kind of longevity. This is the same kind of battery that's in your phone. And these will, these will lose a lot of their capacity in like two years. This is lithium iron phosphate. It's much heavier, it's bulky, but this will last decades. <laughs> yep, this battery is toast. It is fully charged, it's stopped charging, and it's only got 1,700 milliamp hours. 1,700 out of the proposed 
70,000. This battery has like 5% life left. Ugh, okay. Oh, I think I left my key. Oh no. Oh wait, no, I have a key, good. Okay, so I'm thinking about this right now. Um, I have a couple options. I'm sure that the dealer or the mechanic that I was up there, he'll give me the option of using like a scrapyard engine or getting a crate engine. A crate engine is about $3,000. Looking online, I'm sure he'll try to upsell me, whatever. So $3,000 for a crate engine, labor is gonna cost like $1,000, $1,200. So I would be looking at $5,000 for a brand new engine. Or I would be looking at $3,000 gambling on a scrapyard engine. I intend to keep this car forever. Like I said, I wanna get a half million miles. So do I want to get the brand new engine? Like, is that a good investment? If it costs an extra $2,000? $2,000 is honestly not that much for me. I earn that in like two days at my job, four days at my job. Oh, bacon cheeseburger pizza. We want a regular. <laughs> now we get to wait for them to finish our pizza. No onions, yep. Thank you so much. You guys would be appalled if you saw how much of this I actually drank. Pizza, drink, we're good. Okay, I don't know how to do this while I'm filming. Are you serious? Again? What? <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, yeah, I just left it there. Are you? Okay, there we go. I have one more night in this hotel. I think I'm gonna have my brother pick me up tomorrow. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing after that. My last meeting is over. I'm going back to the gas station to get another Dr. Pepper. Okay, that's it for the night. Um, tomorrow my brother's gonna pick me up. Apparently the van that he's using to pick me up in, the battery died, so we're gonna figure out how to get him to get his van to be able to start to come pick me up. That's a whole thing, that's tomorrow's episode. My brother's gonna pick me up, I'm gonna chill at his place, and we're gonna see just how much this mechanic tries to rip me off.